अथव अथ्र क्षत्रिया जाथाओ मथरी स्वस्रात्म जाओ थवा आधुना शाप निर्मुक्ताओ कृष्णा चक्र हथम हसाओ थवत्र क्षत्रिया जाथाओ मात्री स्वास्त्रात्म जाओ थवा आधुना साप निर्मुक्ताओ कृष्ण चक्र हथात्मसो थवत्र क्षत्रिया जाथाओ मात्री स्वास्त्री जाथाओ थवा आधुना साप निर्मुक्ताओ कृष्ण चक्र हथात्म हथम हसाओ making it equal. How the two, Atra, here in the third birth, Kshatriyao, Kshatriyas or kings, Jatao, born, Matri Swastri Atmajao, the sons of the mother's sister, Tava, your, Adhuna, now, shop, uh, 
Sapa Nirmuktao, freed from the curse. Krishna Chakra, by the disc weapon of Krishna. Hatha, destroyed. Amhasau, those sins. Translation. Okay. Thereafter, the same Jaya and Vijay, the two doorkeepers of Lord Vishnu, took birth as Ravana and Kumbhakarna, begotten by Vishrava in the womb at Keshani. They were extremely troublesome to all the people of the Lunaverse. Nard Muni continued, My dear king, just to relieve Jaya and Vijaya of the Brahmana's curse, Lord Ramachandra appeared in order to kill Ravana and Kumbhakarna. It will be better for you to hear narrations about Lord Ramachandra's activities from Mark and Deya. In their third birth, the same Jaya and Vijaya appeared in a family of Kshatriyas as your cousins, the sons of your aunt. Because Lord Krishna was stru has struck them with his disc, all their sinful reactions have been destroyed, and now they are free from the curse. Purport. In their last birth, Jaya and Vijaya did not become demons or rakshasas. Instead, they took birth in a very exalted Kshatriya family, related to Krishna's family. They became first cousins of Lord Krishna and were practically on an equal footing with him. By personally killing them with his own disc, Lord Krishna destroyed whatever sinful reactions were left in them because of the curse of the Brahmanas. Narada Muni explained to Madras Yudhishthir that by entering Krishna's body, Shishupal, uh, Shishupal re-entered by Kuntaloka as the Lord's associate. Everyone had seen this incident. So the point of discussion is about the equalness of the Lord. Because we have our own particular idea of what equalness should look like. So sometimes the Lord's actual nature of equalness is sometimes hard to appreciate. Because it seems that so many people get benefit and so many people get difficulties. So nice people are getting difficulties, not so nice people are getting benefits. What's, how is the equalness? What is the, what is the position or how do you judge equalness? Because right? this is the actual crux of the whole actual, how you say, spiritual and material consciousness. Is what do you use as the factor of judgment? How do you define something? Because there's unlimited ways you could define, right? Depending upon all the varieties of mundane consciousness. Spiritual consciousness is only one way to define. So that makes it easy. Once you get to the spiritual world, whatever the aspect within there, Vaikuntha, Dwarka, Braj, they all think in one way. It's all about his connection to Krishna, pleasure of Krishna. So therefore, there... The decision-making point is about how it pleases Krishna. Then from there you work back into your particular mood, your particular relationship, the particular uh, nature of the realm that you're serving in. So that will have its unique expression. But the central point is always about the Lord's pleasure, nothing else. Well, in the material world, then because here every living entity is thinking about themselves, then it's going to be based on, uh, our view is going to be based on what's good for me. And so something that's not nice may be good for me, I'll say it's good. Something's nice, but it's not good for me, I'll say it's not good. So then we become confused. But from the transcendental platform, it's just simply, what does Krishna want? What does he like? What pleases him as a person? That's what's defined in Shastra. Shastra defines what pleases Krishna. Depending upon the individuals, their particular conditioning, their particular values and interests, 
then the pleasure of Krishna will be presented in a variety of ways. From more subtle, more metaphysical, to more gross, to more intellectual, more sentimental, more attachment, less, more detachment, and any combination. So all the different Shastras give the same points, just they use different wordings to explain it. Right? Just like you have synonyms, they explain the same thing. But depending upon the flavor, the mood, the situation, you use a different word. It matches. So the Shastras are like that. All they're defining is what pleases Krishna. So then, basically it comes down to is that since it's about Krishna, then how he constructs things, how he arranges things, that's what's going to make for his pleasure. So someone who follows the Vedic recommendation, whether it's known or unknown, will please Krishna. If you know it and you follow it, that will please more. You don't know it but you follow it, then Krishna will be, it's nice. It's better than not following. So that's actually the bottom line. How close it is to what Krishna wants. How, what does he like as a person? So then, that's why you see someone who's not necessarily a nice person may somehow or another be doing something right. Right? You know, like say, you say, uh, how you say, like, what's his name? Robin Hood. Okay, he's stealing. So stealing's never good. Doesn't matter if they're rich or poor, who they are, stealing's not proper. But then he gives in charity. He takes care of people who are in need. That part's good. The other part's not good. So for one part, he'll, he'll, he'll get a bad reaction. For the other part, he'll get a good reaction. It's not that, oh, he's a thief, everything's bad. No, it's based on what you do. What part is good is good. What part is not is not. And then to make things a little bit, take it a bit further, is there's the intent on why you're doing it. Now is he giving, stealing from the rich, giving to the poor? What's his intent on doing that? That will also have a flavor. So if now he's giving to the poor because he wants to be well known and famous amongst that group of people, he'll get less benefit. Because if you're proud about your charity, you lose actually the benefit. You, you boast, yes, I gave this much, I, you know, like that. You lose the benefit. So intent also is there. So we see as this combination, because Krishna is sitting in the heart, He knows what you think. He knows what you feel. He knows why you do everything. Right? So that's the whole point, is that He knows all these things. And depending on how you deal, then He responds. You do things right, you get a good result. You do things wrong, you get a wrong, bad result. That's the equality. So for every living entity, no matter who they are, how they deal, Krishna will see in this way. And therefore, it doesn't matter your position, you will be taken care of according to how you're reciprocating with Him, either directly or indirectly. Then you have the devotees, that will be a step beyond. Because for the general public, that's called stanam, that's just maintenance of the universe. But for the devotees, then th that is, uh, what is it called? It means nourishment. Poshana, yes. So he's, thank you, he's nourishing there because they're doing it consciously with devotion. So therefore, for the other things, you do one unit, you get one unit. One unit good, you get one unit good. One unit bad, you get one unit bad. But for the devotees, because they're doing something, then they do something to please Krishna, they get so much more, so much greater. The result is much more, so therefore nourishment. So this then is bewildering in general because you can't tell why people are getting such good situations that don't seemingly deserve it. Why do different things happen? So the point is, is for the devotee, then the idea is that if you always looks at it according to how Krishna 
would look at it, what would please him according to his standards, not our standards. Because sometimes you hear devotees, oh, Krishna wouldn't like that. And, but if you check, it's because they don't like it. Krishna might actually not be okay with it. Because for Krishna, it's the devotion that's the main thing. Everything else, when we say something that Krishna likes, what we're talking about is the only thing he actually likes is devotion. So then what we're referring to when we say the rules and regulations of the scriptures, the recommendations of the scriptures, we're talking not about the primary, about the devotional attitude. We're talking about the secondary forms, the mediums to express the devotion. Right? So the mediums are not the devotion. Therefore, expressing the devotion. But it doesn't mean that your intent in choosing a secondary medium doesn't have some connection to devotion. Am I choosing a secondary attribute because it pleases me or it pleases Krishna? So if it pleases Krishna, that's sannyas. Right? I'm doing this work for Krishna. It's already Krishna's. I'm doing it for myself and giving to Krishna. That's renunciation. And if I'm doing it for myself and then eventually some point some little bit is giving to Krishna, then it's smaller renunciation. Right. So that's the whole thing that Krishna will be looking at. It's not about what secondary is being performed. It's about what's the intent of it. Why do you choose what you choose? What is the reason that you do what you do? That will make for the greater point. So then we'll see as you just get for the action itself, it will get a reaction. That will come. That you don't have to worry. But beyond that, that's going to come based on what's the intent in, in connection to Krishna. So that becomes the subtlety there. So it's about the personal relationship with Krishna. That's actually the whole point of everything. It's not about the rules and regulations, it's not about the forms, it's not about that, it's about that devotion. And so, because it's about the devotion, it actually starts from devotion. Here we're starting from the externals working towards devotion, but we have to remember in the spiritual world, they start from devotion and then there's a secondary manifestation of that. Mother just showed up, she has love for Krishna. That's the primary aspect. The secondary is she expresses that particular parental love through cooking for Krishna, keeping the house nice for Krishna, making nice clothes for Krishna, worrying about Krishna. That's the secondary. Right? So that means how does this work? There it's the primary is first, then the secondary follows to support it. Then it reflects off the viraja of our desire. Then it reverses. Because if we look at it, what are we interested? Are we envious of the devotion that Krishna gets? That the love is there? Or it's about the facilities he has and the enjoyment he gets from it? So therefore, it reflects off of our attachment or lust for the secondary items. Therefore, the first thing to look at is, we, I mean, the first thing we do is only deal with secondary. Primary, we very rarely ever get to. It means one in the devotional we never get to, basically, unless we take up devotional service. But even on the mundane platform, actually the purpose of a secondary aspect, very few people know and do. Because what you do is always going to be, go back to some good quality. Right? Why does somebody have a house? Why does he work very hard to have a house? Take out a mortgage, work very hard, save his money, you know, uh, miss out on so many facilities he could have, but he's working for the house. What's the point of the house? Right? The point of the house is security, safety. An environment in which then members of the family can have a relationship and express that relationship in a stable, steady way. Because you know it's going to be the same every day. Right? That's the point. But the focus is all on the secondary, the external point. It's about the house. You have a nice house, oh, family life must be great. You don't have a nice house, you can't have good family life. But it actually has nothing to do with that. It's whether you appreciate the quality of that security, the quality of the relationship, then you can have something. 
That's what actually makes things function. But by modern advertising, hey, you don't sell money off of that much. Like that. It goes by the secondary, the social, all these different things, the economic. So we're looking at the secondary. Therefore, the scriptures, first thing we'll notice is rules and regulations because that's where we put all our focus. So then there's recommendations. These secondary aspects, these are followed by the residents of the spiritual world. This is what they do. This is how they eat, they talk, they walk, they sit, they dress, they dance. This is what they do. So now if you want to develop love for them, they use these secondary attributes to express that love. So then if you, can, if you use that, it's a step in the right direction since we don't have that love. Then by doing those secondary as aspects connected to the Lord, that we want to do this to please the Lord, it will purify us, it will bring us to that platform of devotion. So it's not the forms of using that makes the devotion, it's the intent in using it. So the reason what we choose is what has been recommended to us by the great personalities. Because what do we know about the spiritual world and what goes on there? But the great personalities, they know they're from there. They know what pleases Krishna. They know what their superiors uh, do. And so they're just assisting them. So then, that's why then the secondary... That's, so the devotee is doing these secondary to please Krishna with the intent of developing that love. Therefore, poshanam, or nourishment. And for the non-devotees, then they're just either following the rules and regulations the Vedas give by, by determination or haphazardly because human beings and nature tend to do some nice things here and there. And so then they get the reaction to that, the results of that. So this is, if you look from this perspective, then you can actually see how Krishna maintains, how he reciprocates with everyone. If one uses another formula, one will find it will be very confusing. So this is what Narad Muni is explaining. Is that it's the aspect of pure devotion that makes things work. That's what actually is the functioning point. Everything else is simply something to support. There's recommended aspects of support. There's things that are neutral. And there's things that are actually opposed, like that. So the Acharyas, they discuss these things. So Prabhupada tells, what is useful, what is not. So here then is pointing out is because of that contact with Krishna, because of their absorption in Krishna, they're going to get something, right? They are thinking of Krishna, right? The point is, is one should always be absorbed in the Lord. So uh, uh, Ravana, Haranyakashipu, Shishupa, they are, they're totally absorbed. Therefore, being killed by the Lord, they don't know he's the Lord, they get material facility, right? Understand means connecting oneself to the Lord gets benefit. They're getting the benefit. One can say they're demons. Why are they getting this benefit? Because they're actually connecting themselves to the Lord. Right? Just like we see the demons, they follow Shukracharya. They surrender to him. He's the guru. They do what he says. They get elevated to the heavenly planets. Indra, he offends his guru. He ends up sitting in a lotus stem in the Manasarova. You know, hiding there. And uh, lotus stems, if you look at them carefully, they're not very big. Right? So, that's just how it works. It's Krishna's system. It's not our system. It's not how we say it should be. It's how Krishna says it should be. That's what's going to get us something. We have to look at it from that point. That's the perspective. The International Society for Krishna Consciousness. That's the point, is the consciousness is there. Not just saying, yeah, yeah, we're conscious, now what about this? No, it's about, that is the thing. Then you choose the best secondary to express it. It's not about the secondary, it's about which is best to express the primary. You make it about the secondary, you'll miss the point. You'll miss the primary. Right? It's which one to do, which one matches the situation. 
So that's what the Vedas are all about. What is the time, place and circumstance? Two, see one's Krishna consciousness in connection to it and see that consciousness in that situation to ex, ex, uh, how you say, engage it in Krishna's service. That's what the Vedas are talking about. So they talk about all the different situations, all the different activities, all the different results you can gain. But that's only so that you can decide which one is best for serving Krishna right now. Nothing else. It's not time, place and circumstance to get it practically done for me. It's time, place and circumstance to actually express devotion for Krishna. And then by the practical activity, practical results will come. But the point is, is your consciousness will define whether you get devotion from that practical endeavor or not. Okay, are there any questions or comments? Yes. Mike, go ahead. A question regarding sannyas and renunciation, okay? The difference between sannyas and renunciation. Yeah, no, it's a simple, simple point. The difference between sannyasa and renunciation, because we're talking about it in connection with Krishna consciousness. We're not talking about sannyasa and renunciation outside of that. So basically you have an activity, you perform the activity, it will generate a particular result, right? That's just the way, that's just how by the, Lord, the laws of the Lord, his energy transforms. Right? You follow the law correctly, it transforms in a particular way. You don't follow it, it transforms in some different way. Okay? So now, if I engage in a particular activity that will result in transformation of the energy that will produce a particular result, now why am I doing that? So it's not the activity itself, because we always take everything, it's the activity, it's this, it's that. No, it's why you're doing it. Remember, the jiva can desire. We, we're not the one that's doing it. Right? The energy itself is transforming. Right? Just like I put something in a blender and push the button, I don't blend it. I can say I blended it, but I didn't. The machine blended it. Right? Does that make sense? So, what's your intent in doing that? So, if my intent in doing this is the result is Krishna's. So that means before I start, it's Krishna's. That's called sannyas. Because the result's already been given to Krishna. If I perform the activity, the idea that's my activity, my result, and then I'm going to give the result to Krishna afterwards, that's called renunciation. So that can mean I can give all of it to Krishna or part of it to Krishna. So depending upon how great is my own desire. Does that make sense? So the more I see it all, whatever I'm doing in connection with Krishna, and that's it, that's sannyas. So that means that's the ideal in the Vedic system is everybody should be sannyas. So we have eight different ways to express that mood of sannyas through the Varnashram system. Right? Because as we said, you have to have an expression for the mood. So then socially, then we have the Varnashram system. Right? <coughs> yes, does that make sense? Uh, yes, Maharaj. Maharaj, could one say that sannyas is bhakti and Renunciation is like karma mishra bhakti, would that be You accurate? could say like that. Could be karma mishra, could be jnana mishra. The point is, is there's something mixed. But the point is, is because it's connected to Krishna, you'll get purified. And then by being, getting purified, knowledge and detachment come. So eventually, with, by good association, you come to the platform of sannyas. So that means anybody can come to the platform of sannyas no matter what their situation. That's what we're trying for. So, when we're talking about giving up the results of things, we mean that it's done to please Krishna. We don't mean you don't work in the field. We're not saying grihastas don't make money, take care of the family, but why are they making money? Why are they taking care of the family? Is it about Krishna or is it about themselves? But if it's about themselves, it's renunciation. If it's about Krishna, it's sannyas. Therefore, you see very attached persons as grihastas and you see the paramahamsas as grihastas. Right? It means uh, not who's before, after Prachina Bar, he shot Pachetas, and then the story of 
Bhutanapada and his brother, Priyavrata. Priyavrata is a Paramahamsa, but he was asked to become a Grihastha and become the king. But he was a Paramahamsa all the way through. So he's simply using Grihastha Ashram to perform those duties to please Krishna. Right? Most people take up Grihastha Ashram because they like the results and working in that field of, of uh, endeavor. They're comfortable there. So they do that for Krishna. Right? So it'll be renunciation. But he would be in that position of sannyas. So, but that means because it's not about him, he does the duties nicely. Therefore, he'll look like an attached householder. That was the doubt in the questioning about it. How is it that, uh, you know, by attachment you're not going to get devotion and someone who has a devotion would never manifest attachment. So how is it the Prachetas are in family life for a long time, like I think it was a million years, and, uh, and at the end then they were, became, you know, great personalities and went back to Godhead. That's because they were great all the way through. But you only see externally when they gave it up and took to the renounced orders then you see, okay, now they're detached, but they were detached all along. Because it was all about, I'm following Grihastha life simply because this pleases Krishna. Therefore, they do it. It's like a drama, right? A good, drama, a good actor plays his part well. It's not that he thinks, I am that, right? You know, except for, yeah, okay, the Stanislavski is, okay, they'll say I am that. But technically, you're not, right? So, they're, they're, they're playing their part. And they're playing it well. So therefore, to everyone else, it looks like, okay, here's a very attached Grihastha. But you can tell by other symptoms that they're not, because family is happily, family is this. It's an interesting point, is that in the, um, I think in the, oh, I can't remember. I think it's fourth canto. Then the discussion is, oh yeah, with Purunjana, the discussion is there about, about probably brings up about attachment and hatred. So when we see hatred, we see all this, you know, all the isms and all the fractional kind of things. That comes up because there's material desire. If there's no material desire, you don't see that. That's how you see the symptoms. Like with the Pandavas, do you see that they see all, that there's us and them? No. But with Duryodhana, you do. Right? Because he has desire. Yudhishthir doesn't. Right? So that means Yudhishthir is doing, he's running his kingdom, he's dealing with his wife very gently and nicely. You know, he's not going, hey, I don't need this, I want to chant my japa, you know, why are you being so trippy? No, he deals with everything. So he deals perfectly with all the household elements. But it's because that's how Krishna says the Grihastha Ashram should run, so he's doing it to please Krishna. So that's sannyas. You understand? So the idea is, is that latest you attain that by the time you take sannyas. When you take sannyas, then you can, okay, now you don't have anybody else to work for, so therefore it should be, it's about Krishna. Right? So at least there then, if, not, if you haven't developed it before, here's the, you know, it's like on the trapeze, you have the net below. Right? You know, in case you, it doesn't work before that, then at least by this time, then you get it right. Does that make sense? But in the Vedic system, it starts before, like Prahlad Maharaj, and here he's already sannyas and he's three years old. Right? So that's, that's, the, that's the point. So sannyas is a mentality, then it has its natural external form. So the confusion comes as Grihastha doesn't look like sannyas. Right? But if it's done in Krishna consciousness, it is. Does that make sense? So, so that's the whole point is that, is it about Krishna or is it not? So that's why we have to look at that as the first. Then we start looking at the secondary and the forms and how they match and everything like that. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. You had something back? Yes. All the way to the back. Very much the back. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Insightful as usual. Just recently having a discussion with a learned god brother about Agatha Sukriti. Okay. And his position is that in ISKCON we depend too much on the idea of Agatha Sukriti. And to support his point, he quotes 
the last verse, 28 in chapter 17, that says, But sacrifices, austerities, and charities performed without faith in the Supreme are non-permanent, O son of Pritha. Regardless of whatever rites are performed, they are called asat and are useless both in this life and the next. And I was wondering if you could help to uh, um, describe you know, what happens in a gyata six useless. You know, that's why you don't get rid of them. And then others are not nice, useless. You've just forgotten about them because they got in the closet or you got busy or stuff. Right? So we're used to the idea that nice means useful and not nice means useless. But actually, if it's connected to Krishna, it's useful. And if it's not connected to Krishna, it's useless. That's why there's so much discussion about these pious activities, the recommended activities. Charity, austerity, penance, uh, all the good qualities, tolerance, humility, um, uh, you say respect, all these different things. These are the ideal secondary mediums to engage in Krishna's service. But unless they're engaged in Krishna's service, they're just so much niceness that's temporary and ultimately useless. So that has to be clearly understood because otherwise we tend to judge uh, useful and useless by its secondary position in our value system, what we value as a secondary item by our conditioning. So that tends to cloud the thing. So agyata sukriti means unknown devotional service. So that means someone's done devotional service but didn't know it's devotional service. That's why it's a gyata sukriti. Well, if they do devotional service and they know it's connected with the devotees and things like that, that's where it becomes devotional service. That's why the point I, I may be projecting here, that it may be working from the point that we're depending too much on a gyata sukriti because we're exposing people to devotional service, but due to sometimes shyness, or anxiety that people won't be comfortable with it, we don't mention about devotional service. So then all people get is a gyata sukriti. Like, like let's say we're distributing prasad, but they don't know it's devotees. They're taking prasad, they get devotional benefit that will be eternal. So gyata sukriti is eternal. Those pious activities not connected to Krishna, they're the ones that are temporary. So they'll get eternal benefit but the problem is, is it won't, they won't contemplate devotional service or devotees. So they'll have to wait for that volume to pick up. And there's no impetus for it to pick up any quicker. Because when, once Agyata Sakriti reaches a certain volume, it will transform into Shraddha or faith. Now if they see it's the devotees, then they're taking the prashad and they're appreciating the devotees. So now they're getting more Agyata Sukriti. So b much more quickly they'll come to the point of Shraddha. So that's why if it's at all possible, you always make it clear that this is connected to the Lord, this is devotional service. The idea is that, oh, you just leave it in the background, it'll happen. Yes, it will happen, but it's not necessarily we're getting as much credit as we think we deserve. You know, because it's like, okay, but that's the whole point, is these things are arranged. Krishna's already doing that. He's arranging that these things happen. He arranged that the guys, uh, you know, he had some interest in, you know, what's going on? What's, the, you know, what's happening in life? Why is my life like that? And so his alarm didn't go off. He was late. He missed the... Uh, carpool, he had to take the bus, so therefore when he got off and he had to walk that distance, he walked by the Hari Nam party. Krishna's already doing the Agyata Sukriti stuff. But the whole point is because is he doesn't press. But Lord Chaitanya is worried about that, is that people don't know. Advaita Charya says, I'm already arranging that, no one's responding. So he's calling Lord Chaitanya who's taking the mood of the devotee. The devotees will tell you, here's Krishna, you should surrender. I know you've done nothing to deserve it, but hey, here, take it anyway. Well, Krishna is only if you desire, then as you, you take a step for it, he'll reciprocate. 
So that's the point of devotees in preaching, that they please Krishna more than anyone, that the first offense is offending the devotees, is because they actually go out and are, are bold about it. They preach. That's the whole thing. That's what preaching is, is how to get it across to the person in a way that they would be attracted. This idea is that I just kind of put it there and just kind of leave it and disappear. That's okay, at least it's around. But the real credit is going to be if I do something. You know, it's just like, let's say, for example, uh, the husband's done something wrong, he's upset the wife, okay? So now, the tendency is the husband just sits there and waits for the wife to do something and then respond to it. But she's waiting for him to do something because she's in the feminine position. And then he does nothing, she waits for a little while, then she gets up and le leaves. And then he's going, now what happened? Right? When she was expecting him to try. And then he's worried if I try, she'll reject it. But at least there should be trying. You try, she rejects that, you try this, she rejects that. Until you get one that works. So that's the thing that's pleasing, is that effort. How, okay, we're presenting this, it's a delicate, more of a delicate situation, okay, but how, how, what wording could we use, what examples could we use, what kind of setting could we use that would interest them in Krishna consciousness, that they know this is Krishna consciousness, because nothing is more attractive than Krishna consciousness to the soul, nothing is more sophisticated or refined, nothing is more intellectual, nothing is more practical, and so if one has that faith, one will find it. If one doesn't have the faith, one will, of course, the karmis are more sophisticated, they're more intelligent, you know, they're more professional, they're more this, and who are we? So we just kind of in the back and hopefully throw it out and maybe they'll notice. But if you have faith, there's nothing better than Krishna. He's the most attractive. He makes the atoms hold together, right? The gravity they talk about, Krishna enters. They say when there's a certain mass, but what they forget is how does mass hold together? You have to have gravity in the first place to get mass. So that means Krishna enters these Adam, and because of his, uh, that mood of Madan Mohan, they attract to each other. So he's the attractive feature that makes everything work. So if we can present Krishna in wording, and examples that the individual can, can appreciate, then they can take up Krishna consciousness more quickly. Because otherwise, then we just leave it to chance and who knows how many lifetimes it'll take. Because the way people are going these days, there's going to be a lot of lifetimes in between their next human life. Right? As it mentions in the Shastras, they go to hell for so many times, then they go through so many animal species, then they come back to the human form of life and they get another shot. So, by engaging in Gyata Sukriti, nice, then that can be hurried up. So, Gyata Sukriti is always good, but like you said, to depend upon it, that it'll do its work on its own without my endeavor. It's another thing is I'm making the endeavor and we leave it up to Krishna because it's ultimately up to him. That, then, that dependence is good. That's proper, not, oh, I did this preaching and so therefore I made the devotee. No, it's Krishna. But this thing is that, well, we don't want to be too pushy and this and that and too, you know, why don't we hide in the closet, you know, kind of thing. That people would like that, right? And so then, how is that going to be please, please Krishna? You know, it's, 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 that's why the devotees are there. That's why he took the mood of Radharani, so he could preach. And that's why Lord Chaitanya was, he's preaching. But then, is there anybody else? So Rupa Goswami says, no, we're, we'll, we'll do this for you. And so therefore, those in the line of Rupa Goswami, they're bold. It doesn't mean they're not nice. Bold doesn't mean not nice. Right? We take it that, oh, it means not nice. That's what I'm saying is we have to go by Krishna's definitions, not ours. Because modern thing, bold is not nice. But if you look at it, let's say you had a five-year-old kid. You're sitting in the airport, and this five-year-old kid walks over to you and just goes, hi, what's your name? That's bold. But you would say, that's nice because there's no agenda. So boldness without agenda is good, people like it. But boldness with agenda, now that's the problem. 
So we have to understand is all these good qualities, they're all good when they're connected to Krishna. And if they're not connected to Krishna, no matter how nice they are, they're still temporary. The guy's a nice guy this lifetime. Next life, what's he going to be? You know, a nice deer? You know, I just read about they have these little miniature donkeys. They're about this big, right? You know, like keep, people keep them as pets. And they say they're really, really nice. They're really like kids, you know. So it's like, okay, then he becomes a nice, nice, you know, miniature donkey in somebody's backyard, takes care of the kids, loves kids. Okay, great. But he's a donkey, you know. So that's, that's, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> that's the problem is that he's nice, yes, but next life he's going to be a nice what? So only when that niceness is connected to Krishna does it become a value. That's what, the Bhag that's what the Bhagavatam does from all other scriptures. All other scriptures tells you how technique works and understanding the te technique, this is where it connects to Krishna. Bhagavatam, all it does from verse 1 to the last verse is this is, how you con this is how you connect to Krishna, these are the things you can connect. Right? It starts with the primary and then shows how secondary has been used by the great personalities. All the other literatures, they show what are the secondary and how people have connected it to Krishna. You understand the difference? So one shows the science and then there is the connection in a few verses. Bhagavatam is all about the connection and then those connections, the examples are given through kings and householders and, and you know, sannyasis and brahmins and you know, all kinds of situations. So that's the unique, that's why it's the Paramahamsa scripture because it's talking about the direct devotional service, pure devotional service. The other ones are talking about activities you could engage them in Krishna's service or not. They're pious activities. But they're the recommended activities. Devotees are supposed to be pious, live a pious lifestyle. Pious by Krishna's definition, not by ours. And then, but do that for Krishna because being pious is not enough. It's a, it's a nice way to spend your time here, but you'll spend your time here. Well, if you do it connected to Krishna, then you'll get out of here and go back to Godhead. Is, is that work? Is that... Sadhu, sadhu. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, last question. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Okay. Since in Kali Yuga, people can very easily offenses to the holy name and Lord Chaitanya is very merciful why don't the scriptures recommend chanting Chaitanya's name instead of chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra uh -huh. okay why chant Chaitanya Mahaprabhu why chant Hare Krishna mm -hmm. instead of Lord Chaitanya's Maha Mantra basically yes means because he's more merciful so then why not chant his name because the whole point is, the, the whole system is about pleasing Krishna. Right? Krishna is the original form. That's where his fullness in dealing with his Sarup Shakti is manifest. We see is that there's five forms where Krishna is complete. Means complete meaning manifesting full potency. So Krishna, Lord Chaitanya, Balaram, Nishinga, and Rama. Right? They're called Paravastu. So they're full manifest. They're not, they're not expansions of Narayana. They're the original. But we see in all these other moods, he's manifesting less interaction with his internal potency. So the full expression of his completeness is there in his pastimes as Krishna with Radharani in Braj, right? So that's the topmost. Now, to come to that position, then we need that mercy. So that's when Krishna, who is Mukunda, who can liberate us, takes the mood of the devotee so that we can get, uh, we can actually see the importance of chanting. So that's why we, we following the order of Lord Chaitanya and respecting Lord Chaitanya, then on his order we chant Hare Krishna. So Lord Chaitanya said we should chant Hare Krishna, and that's what he would do. Right? So, so 
therefore we, before we start chanting Hare Krishna, we chant Lord Chaitanya's name. But it's actually about chanting Hare Krishna because that's what pleases Lord Chaitanya. Does that make sense? So again, it comes back to this thing, what pleases Krishna is the actual standard. Because otherwise, logically, it would look, yes, if I chant Lord Chaitanya's name, he's the most merciful, I'll get the most benefit. But he's the most merciful if we follow what he wants. And so what he wants is first to chant Hare Krishna. Does that work? Is that, yeah? Okay. So we'll end here. Sorry. Grantaraj Srimad Bhagavatam ki, Srila Prabhupada ki, Samaveta Bhakti Vrindaki, Jainatai Gaur Premanandi.